Welcome to this short guide to writing the assignment for leading and managing change and improvement. This assignment is uh, the assessment from module within the MA Leadership Programme here at the Institute of Education. For many of our students, this is the first assignment that they write on their MA programme. And it's intended to give them that good start so they feel confident as they engage with academic writing. That's the intended audience. If you're not taking the MA Leadership Programme, then welcome and uh, I hope that it's of use to you as well. So let's move to a rather hackneyed place. Let's start at the very beginning. That seems so obvious, and yet the experience of marking assignments over a number of years suggests it's often not the starting place for many students. Quite a number of people start off and plough straight into the assignment. It lacks structure, the arguments are not rehearsed, the different sections don't join up, so it's well worth taking some time to plan and think about the assignment that you're going to write. Read the assignment brief in the handbook thoroughly. That seems again a very obvious piece of advice, but so often people jump forward and don't necessarily engage with the clear brief that's given. Have a good look at the marking grid in the MA handbook. And you can see there, there are seven areas of consideration, seven criteria, each one arranged in four groups. So you have A, B, C and D. And it states what has to be achieved in order to gain, say, an A grade, or equally well, it would be the explanation if you got a D grade. Some of it is around criticality. Some of it is around the overall grasp of the assignment and the clarity and focus with which you actually write. Now, for the markers, and there are two of them, of course, for uh, each assignment that you submit, we use this grid. And I have to say that marking itself is not a creative activity. We have to look at these criteria and apply them uh, in order to uh, give the correct, reasonable and fair marks to the work that you've submitted. It's also worth taking time to draw some kind of plan. The module handbook will give you the end time for both the submission of a draft and also the final submission date. It's worth dividing up your time and we'll talk about the emphases of different parts of the assignment and actually look at what's reasonable and build into this timeline some of the other professional demands upon you and uh, also, of course, your personal demands. The assignment has five sections and these are assembled rather like building bricks and some are, sections are longer than others. But it's important that the whole assignment has a coherence. Of course it can be broken down, of course it can be written on different occasions. However, it shouldn't look like a series of disconnected magazine articles. The arguments, the whole thread of what's being said should flow right the way through the assignment. We're very much aware that our students have tremendous demands upon their time. Most are serving teachers, and if one thing is very clear, teaching uh, has not got easier over the last few years, so there is a risk of getting bogged down. If you do, it's not all lost. There's a very good article listed on this slide um, from a, somebody who styles themselves the dissertation coach, and it's a, it's a basically 15 minutes a day. Now, you can't do the whole assignment in 15 minutes a day, but if you do get stuck, just putting aside 
15 minutes day by day to make some simple steps forward will often be the way of unblocking the problem. We offer a range of resources. Within the Institute of Education, there is the Academic Writing Unit who are able to offer face-to-face -face support. Um, you have to make an appointment to benefit from that. Or a whole range of online resources. We also have articles on our virtual learning environment, Moodle, about referencing. If you go onto the web itself, you can find a whole series of uh, articles produced by reputable universities, shall we say, even more reputable than ours. Uh, there's one highlighted here on how to do a literature review, um, which is produced by Reading. That's a, a very good one. And there's also an excellent one from the University of New South Wales uh, on criticality. Additionally, we put exemplar assignments on Moodle. This book's produced in-house by the Institute of Education, set as it is within the University College London. It's a student writing guide, it's under £10, and it should be in everybody's possession. And uh, it's, it's such a useful resource to be able to uh, just flick through a couple of pages. How do I do that? What should I do about that? So please consider seriously getting a copy. The biggest resource, and this picture is not inspired by any colleague, is simply the module tutors themselves. We are here to help. We will do our best to resolve issues, large and small, as you tackle this um, foray into academic writing. This is also important. The length. Planning is, is, um, is, is extremely helpful in this. The length of our assignments are 5,000 words, plus or minus 10%. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by saying what plus or minus 10% looks like, but I think you get the drift of it. When you uh, do your word count, of course, um, most of us write in Word. There is the, in the under tools, the section for just uh, automatically measuring your word count. Don't include references or appendices as part of this, but please do not go under the word count or over it, because that unfortunately brings an automatic fail. In all academic writing, it's important that there's very clear referencing of the articles that you use. There's a concise article on this on Moodle, but you can also get a very good examples in the back of a modern education textbook. And uh, you can see, for instance, how a journal article is, uh, is handled, how a web-based reference is handled with the date of access, all of those kind of things. So we're operating with a Harvard referencing system. Accept no other, because we certainly won't. And it's uh, at the end of your writing, you'll put a list of all of those uh, references that you've used. It's not a bibliography. A bibliography is a reading list. So at the end of the, your assignment, we expect to see a section headed up references. As far as the word count, please accept this as a rough guide and not written in tablets of stone. The LMCI assignment breaks down into five sections. There are three shorter sections and two longer sections. The short sections are the introduction, the context, and the conclusion. And those three combined will give you about 1,000 words. The literature review should be about 2,000 words, and the case study itself should also be 2,000 words. Plagiarism, well, um, we ask for all assignments to be submitted on Moodle and that automatically puts them through a plagiarism checker called Turnitin. Usually, if we get a little problem with that, it's not because somebody has um, stolen somebody else's work. More usually, it's down to the fact that they've uh, not referenced something uh, properly. However, on the front cover of your assignment, you're asked to, to declare that it's your work. Plagiarism is theft. 
It's extremely serious and um, is quite likely to get you thrown off the course. It's considered that seriously. It's not a form of recycling. So let's look at the assignment itself. It has an introduction and this should provide a clear overview of where the assignment is going. And oddly enough, it's usually the place for referencing policy. And it's also the place where you'll position yourself in the writing. Most academic writing, though this has slipped a little in, uh, uh, in many instances, but most occupies uh, the third person. So uh, there are certain examples, for example, um, narrative work will tend to occupy a first person um, position. How do you fit with what's going on here? Where, in terms of this case study that you're going to mention, do you, are you a, a participant, an observer? All of those kind of issues should be flagged up in the introduction. Then the second part of your assignment, and in fact it's a substantial part weighing in at 40% of what you're going to write, is the literature review. This is a big subject and well worth moving beyond the few pointers that are made in this presentation. I'm going to just look at four areas of a literature review. The first is around the selection of the literature. Unlike um, some magazine articles where the writer simply selects material that bolsters or supports their argument, you are going to engage with the literature. You're going to find what's out there. It may support your views. It may challenge them. And usually this is done using keyword searches. Keywords are taken in and put into search engines to throw up relevant literature. We tend to use two common search engines. There's the British Educational Index, or BEI, and there's the American equivalent, ERIC. OK, so it was a bit difficult to find a photograph, and I was a bit self-indulgent by putting my favourite guitarist on there. But this stands for the Education Resources Information Centre, and coincidentally was actually set up by a man with the name ERIC. Both of these are accessible through our library, both online, well, particularly online, and um, there is a third, and that's Google Scholar. Nothing wrong with Google Scholar. However, uh, if you start uh, using it, it won't be very long before it asks you to pay money for uh, the use and download of articles, and that's unnecessary when you've already paid a fee to, uh, to study on the MA leadership. The second point, very, very um, um, important here, is that of criticality. And criticality is not some simply weighing in to somebody's piece of writing, because even if you find it's good, you still need to justify that uh, positive opinion of it. A good starting place is to consider the literature you're coming across from really four categories or genres of literature. Starting bottom left is the issue of policy. This could come from government, it could come from your school. And generally, as the point's already been made, it tends to go in the introduction. The second is practitioner-based uh, work. And somebody like John Cotter, who you'll come across in the area of... Um, of the development of uh, leadership management of change is a university academic but at the same time he's also uh, conducts extensive consultancy work in industrial and commercial settings. I personally have not been able to find formal research but what he does is shares models that are derived from his extensive consultancy practice. It could be good, it could be bad. Uh, we're not dismissing it, but saying, actually, this is one particular genre of literature. The next one is research, and research will uh, usually be peer-reviewed. It will usually have clear statements about how it's been conducted, the size of the sample, the methodology that's been used. 
It's a genre of writing, but again, it could be good, it could be bad. Um, it could be strong, it could be weak. So if somebody has conducted a small case study uh, in a school in South London, it will have a validity and it will have a, a, a use. However, to generalise from that, to provide the educational community with global truths, to be honest, is pushing it. And the fourth one is that of theory. And a lot of literature around leadership is theoretical uh, in its origins. It, again, doesn't mean it's poor. It could be. But it's a, um, a, a person who has uh, gathered together uh, and considered the literature and arguments of a wide range of authors and constructed um, conceptual frameworks, models, theories around leadership, probably from the comfort of their own office or home. And once again, it can be extremely useful or it can be very poor. If you read um, the literature around educational leadership, you'll very soon come across the writings of Professor John West Burnham. And some of these are extremely useful and extremely uh, well-constructed and informed. And yet many of them uh, are written from such a theoretical stance. There are obviously other dimensions of criticality well, well worth looking uh, beyond this simple introduction. Another useful thing you can do with criticality is actually put a critique of the particular author into Google. Now, I've, I've gone by way of illustration here. A major writer on educational change is uh, Professor Michael Fullan. And if you put in critique of Michael Fullan uh, and then change, um, you will find um, a number of articles. Once again, you have to consider the quality of these articles. Some could just be a, a blog-like rant, uh, but others could be considered academic writing around the strengths and weaknesses of his work. Please be careful, uh, as I'm sure you tell your own students and pupils, when conducting research on the web. Presenting arguments. Well, when you are writing in this section, present the arguments of the writers or the authors concisely. Please avoid presenting them as a catalogue of ideas. Um, it's a fine balance to be struck. And demonstrate uh, your own engagement with these ideas. Sometimes you actually uh, read a student's description of the um, the work and the views of a particular um, author, and um, you're left thinking, I wonder if they've actually ever seen the work. And in some cases, it becomes very clear they've not actually gone back to the original and engaged with a, a, a brief overview and summary. The fourth part of the literature review is actually bringing your um, your reading, your consideration of these different uh, authors and the different viewpoints and theories and pieces of research back together, winding them um, together, weaving them together to give you a conclusion. So you are providing a synthesis, summary if you like, of the different material that's out there. So again, coming back to Cotter, Cotter on his own tends to be morally neutral. Uh, but if you combine Cotter with Fullan, who places a great deal of emphasis on moral purpose, you're now beginning to produce a change theory that has uh, different dimensions drawn from different writers. This is very important. A great weakness that comes out is that people often... Um, just put down a few lines at the end, and it's a bit like a bookend on the literature review. Where it needs to come is to provide um, a synthesis, a drawing together of the thinking from the literature review. This is important because this is going to be the very tool, the lens, if you like, 
through which you will subsequently consider and analyse and critique the change from your case study. The context, this is another fairly brief section, probably two to three hundred words maybe, and this is just providing the reader with an understanding of the place where the uh, case study has taken place. It, does, it really doesn't need to be extensive. The case study is important. Now this is one you may have been involved in, it may have been one you've observed, it may have been one you led, and it's going to be both described and it will also be analysed and critiqued. It may be that your case study of change um, comes out as a glowing report. You'll have to justify it. It may be that you are actually describing what was a bit of a train crash. However, few points here. Keep it compact and not global. It needs to be tight. You've got to fit all this in 5,000 words. And if it's too nebulous and extensive, you'll find it very difficult. Keep it personal. We're, um, we're looking at something that you have knowledge of. We're looking to boost your learning. Successful or unsuccessful, it doesn't matter. But we do want to uh, experience, we want to see evidence of you really engaging in professional reflection around the case study. So you're analysing it using the synthesis or conclusion that you derived at the end of the literature review. Failure to connect those two components will result in a reduction of your grade. And the conclusion, again it's another shorter section because that case study is going to weigh in around 2,000 words. Your conclusion is your learning. Ideally what we would like to see there is a statement around your learning so that you're taking away from the engagement in, with the literature, applying it to professional reflection of the case study, that you will take away some learning that you're going to then uh, be able to use when you lead and manage a change in the future. That's the sort of direction that it's going. The conclusion is about getting better. Very often with change, uh, when change is initiated in organisations and schools in particular, it's almost that they start from scratch every time they conduct a change. And of course, um, they don't take a meta view of the change. They merely look, has the change taken place? So this is what you're going to do. You're wanting to really have some clear statements of how you are going to lead and manage change in a more effective and successful manner. It goes without saying that the assignment should be carefully proofread. Avoid typos, um, spelling mistakes, and I guess that a difficulty I certainly have is that when I write, I get close up to the, uh, the literature, just to my writing, and um, I become almost word blind to it and I don't see my errors. So perhaps somebody to conduct a, a proofread for you. The jury's out about professional proofreading. I'm thinking of um, a, a, a literate friend. Um, sometimes another way of doing it is actually to uh, take your assignment and read it out aloud. Some care should be doing it, done about this. I personally wouldn't do that in a public space because you will get uh, some, uh, um, some rather strange looks. The, the, there are some simple rules about layout and these are detailed in the handbook, but fundamentally it's Times New Roman, Helvetica uh, and one and a half or double spaced uh, is, is the way forward. This becomes even more important when you eventually get to the dissertation. The acid test, well, it should be of publishable quality. 
Drafts and final submissions are made via Moodle. And the deadline dates are in the module handbook. And it's um, uh, also, subsequently, you'll be notified by email when your assignment is marked and you can download your feedback from Moodle as well. It's good to be familiar with loading um, and downloading from Moodle before the deadline. 5 to 12 on the day when it's due in can be a little um, stressful. We're very aware that many people have both professional and personal pressures upon them. Um, and sometimes there are issues in meeting deadline dates. But if you feel you're not likely to meet the deadline, please contact us beforehand and not after. We'll do our best to try and sort things out. Well, whilst we have a limited room to manoeuvre, we're usually able to come up with some plan. And so my final point is to wish you good luck and uh, I look forward to... Uh, marking your piece of work and also look forward to awarding you a high grade. Thank you for listening.